And so, if this is clear, we can go into how this sequence gets represented for the computer to understand. The, the standard format for these sequences is FASTQ, and it looks something like this. Uh, when you're working with this, you will receive files with millions and millions of reads uh, of lines uh, in each direction, but one read uh, is going to look more or less like this. Here you have two reads, each one has four lines, and the second line of the read is going to be the DNA sequence that the sequencer identified. Then the fourth line is going to be the quality of that sequence. So quality is usually encoded as FRED plus 33, which goes from 0 to 41. The highest quality bases are going to be at the beginning, which you see here, I is like the second highest quality. And then the quality starts decreasing at the end with like different characters. Um, What's Fred? Fred? Fred is just a scoring system um, for translating the probability of being a mistake. The higher, the more certain we are of the um, base, of the read, of the nucleotide. Then there's an identifier for the read, and this is unique for each one of the lines. It contains the name of the machine, where the read was read, the name of the project, um, then the name of the, the number of the lane. So each one of these chips where the sequencing takes place has eight lanes. Some of them have different numbers of lanes. But then this is going to tell you on which one of those eight lanes this, was, this read was sequenced, and then exactly what the location on that, on that plate the sequence was located. And finally, it's going to tell us if it's paired end, which of the two pairs that read is coming from. Oh yeah, and then there's this plus here that it's basically placeholder. So the FASTQ format has all of these fields, has, has all of this information. And what is going to happen afterwards is that each one of these short reads has to find, we have to find the place in the original genome, in the, in the original genetic sequence where that fragment came from. So reference genomes, um, let's say we zoom in on a reference genome and here we have a couple thousand base pairs. You can look where each one of these reads is, um, corresponds in that reference genome with aligning um, software. You can take another read and then say, see, find where it lies and then you can take all the reads and perhaps cover all the places of your genome. And then the more you sequence, so the more DNA that you are reading in the process of the sequencing, the more and more reads you're going to have to cover each one of the positions of the genome. And this is what people will call coverage. Uh, so there's different depths of coverage. 1x is just one line, 10x is on average, there's going to be 10 reads on each position of the genome. 30x would be a good number for having every single position of the genome covered. And then there's deep sequencing projects that go up to 100x, 150x for, um, for different purposes. Uh, one of them is to generate reference genomes. <coughs> 